Hey guys, I'm Eric at AeroGuard Flight Training Center and today as we get into the summertime I wanted to talk a little bit about a specific weather hazard and that is thunderstorms. Um, so specifically what I want to do is kind of answer two different questions. The first is why is a, a thunderstorm hazardous? So what are the hazards of a thunderstorm? And then the second, I want to talk a little bit about the life cycle of a thunderstorm. So how they form and uh, what ultimately allows them to, to continue on. Uh, so that's what we're going to dive into and hopefully we find this video uh, it, of use. So let's start with uh, what is hazardous about a thunderstorm. Good. So some of the uh, hazards associated with a thunderstorm, I think the, the most common that we would probably describe are extreme or very severe turbulence and extreme or very severe icing conditions uh, that would affect us if we were trying to fly through a thunderstorm. Uh, this is why in the case of, of this kind of turbulence, right, that it's, it's the kind of turbulence that could do enough damage to the aircraft that we, uh, we could be structurally unsound. Uh, also, a big result of thunderstorms is hail, right? So hail, obviously, are, are large uh, pieces of ice that can cause significant damage to the, to the skin of our aircraft as well. Lightning, another result of thunderstorms. Uh, lightning can also cause disruption with electrical uh, interference and can also, uh, obviously, pot potentially spark fires. Uh, and then the last two may be less common with all thunderstorms, but certainly significant factor of, of thunderstorms is uh, things of, like a microburst or a tornado. Uh, both of those uh, are, are maybe a little less likely than these others to occur in every thunderstorm, but uh, they certainly have dramatic effects uh, on us flying. Um, good. So. Next, what I want to do is talk a little bit about how a thunderstorm forms and then how it ultimately carries out the rest of its life cycle. Typically, when we talk about the life cycle of a thunderstorm, we break it into three different stages or phases uh, of its life. And so we have the cumulus stage, the mature stage, and the dissipating stage. What I want to do is kind of dive into each of those and talk a little bit more about what's happening as we transition sort of from the beginning to the end. So in the cumulus stage, we can think of that as sort of like the birth of a thunderstorm. And what's happening here is, is sort of the, the culmination of a bunch of ingredients coming together to, to form this thunderstorm. So first and foremost, we have to have moist, unstable air. So we need a lot of moisture in the air and we need the air to be unstable. So the elapse rate is, is changing pretty dramatically. We have this, un, this instability in the air. And then the, the other major ingredient that we're going to need is some kind of a lifting force. Uh, so commonly, uh, people might think of like fronts, for example, where we have air masses colliding and one is gonna force the other up. Um, another example could be oreographic lifting like uh, as an air mass moves over terrain, like a mountain, uh, it's forced up by this terrain and the result is, uh, this results in this lifting force. Uh, in either case, whatever the lifting force is, we need something that causes this lifting force to occur. And so when we start forcing this moist, unstable air to rise, what's going to happen? Well, that lifting force is gonna force that moist, unstable air up into the air. That means the moisture is going to then condense. As it condenses, it forms this cumulus cloud and that cumulus cloud is just gonna to continue to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. So this cumulus stage is really the build out of these uh, very large cumulus clouds. But the more the air is forced up, the greater the amount of condensation that's, that's happening, right? So the more and more moisture in the air that is condensing into liquid or, uh, or turning into a, directly into a solid. And so that means then we have suddenly a, a bunch of uh, either liquid or solid objects that are trying to be suspended in the air. That obviously has a lot more weight. And so eventually this lifting force can't uh, keep going indefinitely forever. As the air mass continues to move, Eventually, 
we don't have enough lifting force to be able to hold all of that uh, solid or liquid material up and eventually it's gonna start coming out. And when it starts coming out, this is going to mark the beginning of this mature stage, which is certainly the most severe part of a thunderstorm. Uh, and we can identify the beginning of it as when the precipitation begins. And this is where the reason why it's going to be the most severe, as I, I try to kind of illustrate here, is we have areas where we have intense lifting force. So we have this instability that where the air is mostly rising, and then areas where the air is uh, being pushed down by all of this precipitation that's falling out. So we have maybe dramatic changes in temperature, and this creates huge amounts of instability in the air and massive amounts of turbulence. Uh, and this is why we have more showery precipitation. We have areas where uh, the, the, this precipitation is being forced out and other areas where lifting forces might be more prevalent and there's not really any precipitation. Uh, so this, this kind of is where we tend to see most of uh, the, the severe conditions, the hazards that we had talked about before. We have the greatest amount of turbulence, uh, the greatest opportunities for icing. Uh, we have now the formation of something like hail, right? In that, in that case, what's happening here is we have moisture that condenses, it freezes into a, a ball of ice, it attempts to fall down, and somehow it gets recirculated, and it gets recirculated. And every time it gets recirculated, it grows a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, until eventually it's so large, it has so much mass, that it's just sort of thrown out of the cloud or uh, thrown out of this, this cycle. It has more mass than is necessary and kind of gets tossed out. This is also the reason why we say that uh, thunderstorms aren't just dangerous in the, the areas that we see uh, the, the, the activity going on, but also even outside of that, hail can be thrown for many miles outside of a thunderstorm as well. Uh, and then eventually what's going to happen then is, is this. Eventually that lifting force is, is going to fade for whatever reason, either because uh, the air masses are, are melting together or the orographic force, for example, that was lifting them has now passed. It's, it, the air mass has moved beyond it. In either case, now we still have all of this moisture in the, this cloud that's going to continue to come out. This is then gonna to transition towards this dissipating stage where this thunderstorm is more or less dying. And what I mean by that is now we have mostly down forces happening. We have very little lifting force. So now this, the lapse rate becomes more stabilized uh, as all of this air is just sort of moving down equally. Temperatures start to flatten out across various altitudes. So therefore the lapse rate stays relatively similar. Uh, and all of this moisture is now uh, falling out equally. So this dissipating stage uh, would mark the end of, of the rest of this. And really what we see typically as a result is uh, we end up with, with an atmosphere that's very stable. We have relatively standard uh, pressures that we'll experience. We see that the lapse rate is pretty much equal across uh, a region and therefore uh, we would anticipate much more stable air. Uh, usually it's very smooth after that. Um, and this would mark sort of the end of this this dying stage, this dissipating stage of the thunderstorm. So I think this helps kind of elaborate uh, a little bit more on this in these three stages, this cumulus, mature, and dissipating stage. I hope uh, this video has been helpful to you. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll continue to produce more video content like this all the time. Uh, thanks and if you do have any other questions, don't forget to leave them in the comments below. Have a good one.